Hello everyone, this is Dr. Alex Avila with Love University and we're back. I'm an author, psychologist, and speaker. Every week we talk about how to love ourselves, others, and a higher nature, how to improve our finances, career, health, relationships, and spirituality. We've been talking about a very powerful entity that can affect you called the thought demons. The critical inner voices that torment you and keep you feeling bad that you may have inherited from your parents, peers, or even from your own mind. Today we're going to be talking about a particularly challenging and difficult thought demon called the compulsion thought demon, the never-ending chase for nothing. There are healthy desires and there are unhealthy desires. Healthy desires consist of wanting what is natural and good for you, including excellent health, love, success, and happiness. Unhealthy desires are those that try to control you and make your life worse. They include the urge to get involved in toxic relationships, engage in substance addiction, or act in self-defeating ways, procrastination or avoidance. Unhealthy desires are manifested in the thought entity known as the compulsion thought demon. The compulsion thought demon is made up of irresistible thoughts that compel you to behave in a certain way that is harmful or destructive to you. Although part of your mind wants you to stop engaging in the unhealthy activity or self-destructive behavior, the compulsion, the other part of you wants to keep doing it. In this battle, the compulsion thought demon's ultimate aim is to make you believe you have no control over your mind or actions. Its malevolent goal is to make you chase after the very things that cause you harm. The compulsion thought demon makes you addicted to romance, sex, attention, food, chemicals and substances, gambling, work, and many other things. When the compulsion thought demon commands your life, your craving for a compulsive desire can become even more important than life itself. Its secret weapon is to convince you to identify with the person, thing, or situation you are compulsive about. The compulsion thought demon makes you believe you are the compulsion. You become fused to the self-destructive thing, person, or activity. When this happens, you cannot see clearly. You don't recognize the tremendous damage you're doing to yourself and others. The problem is that when you're under the influence of the compulsion thought demon, you are in direct opposition to your authentic desires, peace, love, genuine accomplishment. The compulsion thought demon makes you believe that destructive desires, addictions, bad habits, harmful relationships must be expressed before authentic desires can be realized. This is an absolute falsity. In reality, there is no barrier to realizing your natural and healthy desires. When you think from the mindset of a higher level person, you realize that what you really want and need, love, is already inside you. You just need to reach within yourself and bring it out. Unfortunately, the compulsion thought demon makes you pay a steep price in the form of lost relationships, diminished finances and resources, lost time, harm reputation, and destroyed mental and physical health. For example, if you're compulsively drawn towards incompatible and abusive people, you will likely suffer from emotional or physical pain and suffering. If you fall into the deep pit of substance addiction, drugs, alcohol, your brain will be changed by the chemical. When this happens, you no longer receive as much pleasure from the good and natural things in life. These good things include time spent with loved ones, being in nature, doing hobbies and work you love, exercising, and engaging in a spiritual or meditative practice. Instead, your mind and actions will be consumed by the need for the substance, how to obtain it, use it, and recover from it, when you come down from the artificial high. In contrast, a healthy desire for the good things in life, such as the higher nature, God, spirit, or nature, can be a springboard to a higher level of living. When you have healthy desires, you generate a strong energy that moves you out of the state of boredom, status quo, or futility. This energy gives you a mindset of motivation, persistence, and action. If you properly utilize your desire and passion, you will be on the road to lasting and beneficial achievement. You will elevate your mind and soul. You will contribute something positive to society that will last beyond your time on earth. Think about it. What are the healthy and life-affirming desires that motivate you? Perhaps you want to start your dream business or career to help people. Or you want to travel and experience the world. You may want to fall in love and start a family and commune with the higher nature. These are all healthy and positive desires that can help you grow and prosper as a human being. Now let's talk a little bit about the evolution of human desire. Human desire was a part of our early evolution. As primitive humans sought energy, they first looked outwardly to external sources for pleasure, safety, or contentment. These external sources may have included food, sex, social approval, material acquisition, or a god or force of nature, the higher nature. To make sure it rained, for example, early humans would perform certain rituals aimed at pleasing their higher nature. To procreate and experience pleasure and security, they would find a mate. In essence, many of their actions were motivated by the desire for external acquisition 
to provide a sense of security and dealing with the fear of suffering and death. As humans have evolved, we are no longer living in caveman prehistoric circumstances. Yet we still have the same built-in survival brain mechanism. We have the fight-or-flight biological system that can provide us with the brain chemicals we need to survive if we face danger or a threat. Today, when you face the threat of loss, discomfort, or pain, you can respond in various ways. In one approach, you may try to use your rational mind to think your way through a situation and solve the problem that is creating the fear. Or you may rely on your ancestors' primitive mental response by trying to grab and possess external things, people, resources, experiences, to obtain a sense of relief and security. This can lead you to develop compulsions in which you believe you must have an external thing, person, place, or circumstance to feel secure and happy. Unfortunately, this compulsive search for satisfaction and security in external objects often results in disappointment, frustration, and despair. The compulsion thought demon loves it when you try to satisfy internal needs, approval, security, or love, with external objects and circumstances, people, things, or experiences. As your impulsive cravings intensify, you lose much of your good common sense and end up harming yourself and others in the process. Consider the example of an upstanding married businesswoman who endangers her reputation and marriage to engage in a sordid affair with an abusive man. In another instance, a religious leader will use his position to commit financial crimes. He will risk going to jail and losing everything he stood for because he is greedy for more money and power. Why are normally good people willing to lose their relationships, self-esteem, career, finances, security, health, reputation, freedom, and even their very lives to satisfy the mad yearnings of the compulsion of thought demon? The answer is simple. The compulsion of thought demon is clever at glamorizing and exaggerating the magical attributes of the desired object, person, or experience. The compulsion of thought demon skillfully projects specialness onto the desired thing until acquiring it becomes more important to the person than life itself. Think about it. What things are you driven to obtain in a compulsive way? Do you feel compelled to go towards a certain person, substance, or activity, even if doing so causes you and your loved ones great pain, discomfort, and difficulties? If your entire life revolves around getting more of that thing or person or situation, and doing so brings you and others significant harm and suffering, then you're probably under the influence of the compulsion of thought demon. In reality, the source of satisfaction that drives your compulsion is not out there. The actual source of your pleasure is the internal brain mechanism triggered by your acquisition of a want or desire. If the pleasure that is derived is only a temporary one, it vanishes as soon as the brain chemicals triggered by it are used up. By overestimating the pleasure and joy you receive from external factors, you overinflate their value. You allow yourself to fall deeper into the abyss of the compulsion of thought demon. When this happens, you feel compelled to seek more of the external thing, the compulsion, even as you receive less and less pleasure in return. In psychology, this is known as habituation. Habituation refers to a decrease in pleasure after repeated exposure to an external object, person, or experience. When you're compulsive about something, you're driven to have it at all costs. Consequently, you build up a tolerance to the thing you're compulsive about, whether it's a person, material thing, or chemical substance. In the end, you're only left with the chasing and yearning mentality, which ultimately leads you to frustration, fertility, and despair. The exaggerated emotional value of a compulsion can be manifested in various ways. For the person who has a tendency toward narcissism and exaggerated and false self-importance, the compulsion of thought demon makes them crave power and domination over others. In their grandiosity, as encouraged by the compulsion of thought demon, these individuals seek to raise themselves above others by exploiting and hurting them so they can be on top. This insatiable need for power dominates their life and can easily lead to their destruction unless they discover a way to circumvent the compulsion of thought demon and find their way back to humanity and their higher nature. The compulsion of thought demon's favorite strategy is to escalate the value and desirability of the object of desire to make it seem like it is much better than it really is. The compulsion of thought demon can even make you believe the external thing you desire is actually the higher nature, God, spirit, or nature. It tries to convince you that this external element is the ultimate source of your life and happiness. It is your master. The compulsion of thought demon wants to keep you from seeing that the glorious thing you desire will actually lead you to experiencing great pain, disappointment, and failure. If you continue to follow the compulsion of thought demon's destructive guidance, you ultimately lose. You lose your integrity, loved ones, freedom, reputation, health, happiness, and perhaps even your life. When the compulsion of thought demon has its way with you, it will demand a tremendous sacrifice. It will make you pay the ultimate price by insisting that you give up everything you have ever loved or will ever love. Although the compulsion of thought demon may seem like an unbeatable enemy, the truth is that it can be defeated. There is a way to do so. Instead of fighting against or yielding to the compulsion of thought demon, 
you will give your unhealthy compulsive desires an upward turn. This means that you will transform your self-defeating impulses into healthy and uplifting desires. You will use the same intense, focused, and relentless energy that you utilize to get your compulsion satisfied to achieve goals that are worthy, productive, and beneficial. For example, perhaps you're drawn to romantic partners who are abusive toward you. If this is the case, then you will channel your craving for the exciting but toxic person into a strong desire for a compatible soulmate who provides you with genuine love. You will search for a quality and loving person with as much intensity and desire as you pursued the unhealthy and toxic relationships in the past. In this way, you're substituting an inauthentic desire, attraction for a toxic partner, for one that is authentic, finding a compatible soulmate. As you begin to give your desires an upward turn, you come to a fascinating realization. You pay for what you want by giving up what you don't need. If you want genuine love in your life, you pay for it by giving up the temporary thrill of being with a superficially attractive romantic partner who is also emotionally unstable. The key is to realize that any initial pleasure you receive from the exciting yet emotionally damaging lover will quickly vanish, leaving you with only pain, sadness, and misery. Therefore, you need to pay for what you want, a compatible partnership, by giving up the superficially charming person. In this way, you will replace the toxic partner with a compatible soulmate who harmonizes with your authentic nature and brings you peace and love. Now, perhaps you have more than one negative compulsion. Maybe you smoke, eat, and drink too much. Or you may engage in random, meaningless love affairs and also shop excessively. Or do you recognize that these things are damaging to you? You don't believe you can do anything to stop yourself from doing that. The solution is to give up your compulsions one at a time. Try the following exercise. Step 1. Start a compulsion journal in which you write down all of your harmful compulsions and record all the details you can remember about them. Write down when the compulsions occur, time and day, how often they occur, their intensity and ability to overwhelm you, how you feel when they first influence you, exciting, anticipating, and how you feel when you have indulged in the compulsion, let down or regretful. Step 2. The next time one of your compulsions urges you to act in a self-defeating way, for example, binge smoking, Imagine what this compulsion looks like. Draw it and give it a color. Maybe you see the compulsion as a cloud of black smoke or a red creature with a pointy head. Also imagine what the higher nature looks like and draw it as well. Maybe you visualize the higher nature as being a spirit, a part of nature, a symbol, or a face. Perhaps as white, green, or blue. Step 3. Now imagine that your higher nature is lifting the compulsion thought demon away from you. See the white figure of the higher nature vacuuming the black smoky figure of the compulsion thought demon out of your mind. Take a deep breath as you visualize that the higher nature is completely cleansing you of the compulsion thought demon's craving and chasing thoughts. Say to yourself, binge smoking compulsion, I completely surrender you to my higher nature. I will not yield to you. I will simply let my higher nature absorb your negative and tempting power until the craving in me ceases. I will block your attempt to trick me into self-destructive behaviors. I will only act in a natural, pure, and true way that enhances my life and the lives of others. I am free of you. As you do this exercise, your mental burden will become lighter. Where before you yielded to the compulsion or futilely tried to fight it with your own mental willpower, now you can relax and let the higher nature do all of the work. You can sit back as your higher nature fights the battles for you and kicks the compulsion thought demon out of your mind. When you rid yourself of the compulsion thought demon, you will be lighter, more confident, and more spontaneous. You no longer have to look over your shoulder, worrying about the consequences of your compulsions. You are no longer drawn to give up the good things in life, loving relationships, self-esteem, peace of mind, to pursue the never-ending chase that leads to your self-defeat. As you harness the power of compulsion for your own benefit, you realize that you can channel your compulsive tendencies into a force for good, to grow and achieve amazing accomplishments. You will use the same irresistible energy and force that drove you toward self-defeating behaviors toward a higher calling, the healing of yourself and those around you. By doing this, your irresistible urges will turn into fuel for excellence, and your compulsions will be transformed into pure compassion and love. Now you are surely on the way to the ultimate successful and happy you. So, love your students. The key idea here is that a compulsion can be turned or transformed into something that can help you. Instead of being self-destructive or self-defeating, you can give it an upward turn. Think of the compulsion as an energy source that has raw power. You can channel for good. Now, the compulsion in a good way could be exercise. It could be being in nature, meditating, spiritual practice. 
do something creative, something you've always wanted to do. And that will transform the other compulsions, binge smoking, overeating, overdrinking, being in addictive relationships, into something more useful and positive. The key is to live a loving, powerful, and content life in which you can contribute your talents to others, the world, and to those you love. So love your university students. If you want to comment on today's show, if you want to be on a future show, if we have a show idea, you can reach us at loveuniversitylove at gmail.com. Visit us at loveuniversity.love. Call us at 310-226-8090. You can also download the podcast on Podbean, Spotify, SoundCloud, and iTunes. You can like and follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Love University Podcast. You can follow us on Twitter at Love Letter U Podcast. So, Love University students, until next time, go out and have a week in which you transmute and transform any compulsions or negative irresistible impulses into something powerful, positive that can enhance your life and the lives of others. So you can be free of compulsion, but also have love and joy in your heart. Until next time, this is Dr. Alex Avila. Put away your notebooks, your iPads, your phones. Class is now dismissed. Love University. <laughs>